So everything has a cost. What you get with a spreadsheet is simplicity. However, with a spreadsheet, you get simplicity, both in, in implementation as well as function. In a database, you get more complexity of multiple views, but it's more complex to implement. So it's kind of like, if you can get by with a spreadsheet, do that, but a lot of times, it's worth doing the complexity of a database. That's all I was looking for right here, in like 25 words, okay? So, 2A, we wanna have a table that has a customer table. So let's go take a look and let's go make a quick sheet right here. If we were to have a customer, what might be some of the fields that we track? So customer. Um, okay, yeah. even that, what are you gonna call this person? Name. Name, okay. Yeah. And then you're gonna do what? You're gonna cut grass where? Just in the middle of the street or where? Their address. At their address. Okay, and you wanna contact them, you might have a phone or an address, okay? So we know that every table requires what? A primary you need a primary key. A primary key has two characteristics. What are you, Cassie? Uh, they're unique. Unique and not null. Unique and not null, right? Okay. So if we put put in filled in some names here, like you know, in the keeping in, in the theme of Simpsons, we had Homer, one, two, three, Main Streets. Um, phone number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. So, and then we had email here, not two addresses. Okay, and then we did homer at gmail.com. If we looked at these, are there any fields, are there any fields that potentially are unique in here? Is a name unique? Nope, is an address unique? Only by zip code, if you did different zip codes. Phone number. Okay, phone number or email. Okay, so let's say that we want to do use email as a key, okay? Typically our primary keys are on the left and our foreign keys are on the right. So I'm gonna insert, then we're just gonna drag these two over. Okay, resize this guy now. All right, let's say we have another customer, Barney here. Barney, at uh, mose.com, he's always at the bar. Okay, so we have Barney, and we have 456 Oak Streets. Okay, let's say he's at 456-789-1230, phone number. All right, that's all I was looking for, something that easy, that hard, okay? Couple rows, and just three or four fields, and identify the primary key. Okay, let's make a jobs table. What are some of the things we want to track on a particular job? What you did. Okay, what we did. Okay, so maybe a description. Description. What else? How long is that? Duration. Okay, maybe rate. Yeah. What else? Maybe like dates. We want to do that. Are any of these items unique? Is a description unique? No. no, because I can cut grass on multiple houses. Is a duration unique? Okay, yeah. what about a date or a rate? Are any of those unique? No. no, right? So if we read the directions in here, I even kind of hinted at this. In fact, I even told the, right, the answer here. There's nothing unique in this table, so it would be best to create a field called job ID that will be your primary key for this table, okay? So we come in here, we could just go insert, shift ourselves right, and let's say we do job ID. Okay, we could just do something as simple as one, two, three. Okay. And let's say description and job one, we cut the grass. Two, we cut the grass. Three, we raked leaves, raked leaves. Okay, duration, one hour, one hour, two hours. Okay, rate, let's say $10. We did all this, let's say the dates, we did 
10, 9, 2016, 10, 10, 2016. Let's, get a, let's make this 10, 10. And make this 10, 11, 2016, okay? So right now, once we put job ID in there, now we have something unique. This would be an example like a, just an auto number that we put in access. So how do we, so right now we have these two separate tables that we want to link together. How can we possibly link these together? Okay, we have a primary key becomes a foreign key. Okay, now the big what if. Do we put email into job ID? Or do we put job ID into email? What do you guys think? Email. Okay, did everybody hear Bernice? She said put email in job ID. Anybody disagree? Anybody want to put job ID into customer? No, why? Bernice, tell us why. I agree. Wait, what? So why would you put email into job ID? Explain that. Why wouldn't you put email? No, why would you? Well, because it's, uh, it's unique. When well, so is job ID. Job ID is unique. Oh, job ID is your primary key, and our email is our primary key, so it's going to become our foreign key. And but why? 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 So you're saying put email down here. Yeah. Why couldn't I put job ID up here? Because it doesn't tell you anything about who's who you're helping. Like okay, user, so that's. It doesn't say who, which well, we're just trying to link the tables. Does anybody remember the one to many rule we said? So we said that customer can have how many jobs? One many. job or multiple jobs? Many jobs, right? One particular job can have how many customers? One. Person. Just one customer, right? So we have the one table up here, and we have the many table down here. <laughs> so okay, so Terrell's going to explain why we did why, why we say this is one table to many table. Okay, we said one person can have how many jobs? Many, many jobs, right? So Homer can get his grass cut every single week, right? We can just do weekly. So that's. So we have one customer can have many jobs. For one particular job, like job one, how many houses can you be at, at the same time for job one? One or two houses? Okay, so you can have your lawnmower and you, Terrell, can cut grass at how many houses at the same time? You, Terrell, can cut grass at how many places? One at a time, right? Okay, so one job can only be at one customer's house, okay? So because of that, we said the job table is the many table. That's why Bernice wanted to put a copy of email, the primary key, down there as a foreign key. So let's say we cut the grass on 1010 at Homer's house. What will we put in here? Homer, email. Okay, so we put email, we have to match the field, so we're gonna put email, and we just put homer at gmail.com. Okay, let's say the second job, we, we did at Barney's house, barney at mose.com. Okay, and let's say we did rake leaves at Barney's. So what would that be here? That'd be Barney. Okay, so you now see how you can tell by that job where you did it at based on that linkage of that key now? You may not see that big huge thing. Sean, make sense? Good? Everybody's good? You may not good. All right, so let's look at the last question. Okay, the last, so that was steps A, B, and C. Okay, so Bart was doing some research on DBA, database management systems and discovered there's two major types, personal and enterprise, assuming Barth and maybe Millhouse will be the only two persons on a database management system at any given time, would you recommend a personal or enterprise database and explain why? Personal, personal. who said that? Francis, why? Uh, 
Okay, small business, easier to implement. It was just a couple people. We're not too worried about the lock update or the linking problem, right? No, you're going to say, Josh? Okay, so tell us more about that then, Josh. Um, well, when you got different people accessing at the same time, and what will happen is the updates will um, not coincide. Exactly. Somebody will be seeing something that the other person won't be. Yeah, so we had that loss update. We use locking mechanisms on personal databases, very weak locking mechanisms. Once you get beyond like five people or so, those locking mechanisms can break. Okay, so whenever you can get by with it, you're going to use a personal database because it's much easier to implement. Instead of doing things like putting SQL out there, um, uh, does everybody remember that SQL statement we had? So let's take a look at this. Um, we're going into chapter five, PowerPoints, opening this guy up. So on access, we're able to drag and drop things. On, on enterprise databases, we have to use something like SQL to write statements like this. Would you rather drag or drop or do that all day long? Drag and drop, right? So it's much simpler to implement a personal database, okay? What personal databases do we have? What are the two prevalent ones out there? Access. Access and? Open office. It's what? <coughs> what accounts? I don't know, something wrong with my account. Okay. I'm just kidding. So do you, did you put your password in too many times? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's why it's locked, yeah. It's finding my phone and it's not going through here. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know. Yeah, so you're putting, are you, do you have caps lock on or something? I don't know. All right, we'll get to it. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we have two of them out there. What are they? Open we have office. Open Office and we have Access. Why not use MySQL? It's free. That's for an enterprise. It's an enterprise database, so don't let the fact that MySQL is free fool you in that it's not an enterprise database. It's a free enterprise database, okay? So just because it's free doesn't mean that, you, that, that it's not hard to implement, okay? So does that make sense? So literally, we spent how many minutes through this? Ten? Yeah. That was chapter five homework. Chapter five homework right there. All right, so if you didn't get it in, please get it in. Just make sure you know it for the exam. Okay? So when's the exam? Thursday. Thursday, right? Thursday. Who's missing a popsicle pair today? Okay, yeah. So that's what I should do is just have the people who don't have popsicle pairs today be teammates for the test. All right, so, all right, so test on Thursday, speaking of the test, so two parts, part one, 12 to 12.55, we'll do it in Blackboard and have an Excel practical, it's not a simulation, it's real Excel, okay, and what are you going to study for that, what are you going to look at? Workshop three, the workshop three addendum and workshop four, workshop four post, okay, if you forgot how to do that, what can you do? Go back, to Go back to the videos, right? What? There's videos out there? Really? Seriously? Yeah, heck yeah. So each one of these workshops has helper videos. See this practice video? Okay, so for this particular one, like workshop three, here's the addendum video, here's the in-class video, there's even an Excel 3 greater helper video. Wow, that was generous. Okay, and then here's workshop four. Workshop four video right there. Okay, so if you, if you forgot how to do any of that stuff, look back through that and you can watch those videos. Okay, thoughts, questions? Okay, and you're going to have from 1255 to 115 to do the Blackboard portion again without Excel with your Popsicle pair. So 55 minutes and 20 minutes. You have to kind of burn through on your Popsicle pair on that one. Okay. So what I want to do is go through Excel 10 right now, and then we could do, uh, with whatever remainder time we have left, we could roll through exam two um, study guide review and answer any questions, okay? All right.
So let's open up Excel 10. So if you go into Excel, Workshop 10, are you able to log in, Abdullah? No. No? I don't know why. It's it? Yeah, go to surf.miracosta.edu. And there's a link down at the bottom that says surf. Okay, and if you get up to the bottom, you'll see a uh, forgot password students. Well, because you're using a different password. <laughs> oh, so now try to do it again. So you might be locked out. So I think there's like a time. So once you lock it out, it's locked out by I think a half hour. Okay. All right, cool. All right, so um, go in and download the forecast and then the golf what if videos. So the what if is kind of like what you guys did. In the simulation. In the simulation, yep, yeah, exactly. All right, so Excel 10 grader, this one is kind of a thinker. So I gave you guys a lot of hints down there at the bottom, step seven, eight, 10, 12, 13, 15. So that one, step two, that'll hopefully help you guys out. Okay, so let's open up the workshop 10 forecast file. Okay, forecast. All right, so let's pull this up in the back. Okay, so we're going to go into the product and sales worksheet. Does anybody have any um, questions on how to create a header or footer in here? Everybody's pretty good. So if you go into page layout, you go into page layout and click up here, the header or footer, you can put these elements. So it's so that should be pretty straightforward. All right. So one of the things that we want to do is we want to, I'm going to lock you guys up, is we want to do goal seek. What does goal seek do for us? What does goal seek do? Anybody know? Uh, I'll just like put in certain numbers to be able to tell what the outcome would be. Yeah, so it basically will go kind of like find variables for us. So in this one, what we want to do is we want to find the quantity of dozens of golf balls times this price equals our goal, okay? So how can we do that? What is goal seek? Okay, so we're gonna do what? We're going to go into extended price, and then what? Data, data. data. What if analysis and goal seek, and we want to do what? So we want to set the cell E5 to what value? 27,500 by changing what cell? The quantity. So we're going to click C5. Blamo, there you go. So that quick, it said, oh, 918. Pretty rad, right? Okay, what about here on this one? We want to find the price at 250 golf and bros will get us up to 9,000. How can we do that? So same thing, what if analysis, goal seek, we want to set cell E6 to 9,000 by changing cell D6. And it'll automatically go get the price for us. Pretty cool, right? All right. So why don't you guys go do that for those five things right there. So rip through those and let's see what we come up with. Two special events coming up. There's a link to cyber. 
conference. Here is a, I just found out about this right before class at University of Phoenix. Down in, uh, it's down towards Fry's down by Mission Valley. So by the stadium. So this is going to be Thursday from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Say so, hey, good talk. There was one at CSU San Marcos about five months ago, and they're going to do hors d'oeuvres afterwards. It was actually really good. Last time, I'll give somebody two stickers for this one. 20 points of extra credit if they go to this. Okay, I link the cyber. So this is going to be at University of Phoenix. I'll send out the I'll send out the brochure for that after class. Okay. So link to Cyber University of Phoenix, Mission Valley, Thursday, 6 30 to 8 p.m. Two stickers. So if anybody's interested in cyber, it's a great event. All right. So how are you guys doing on this? What did you guys get for quantity for um, golf club sets? Golf club sets. <clears throat> Oh, okay, how many? 38? All right, what about the Platinum Ladies Golf Set? Why is mine like that? I know, me too. Which document is that? This is the format. The forecast. This is the forecast one. Oh, yeah, ours looks a little different. I mean, yours looks like that one. Okay, are you guys on the forecast workbook? Yeah. You sure? This is what I thought it was. Forecast. So there's two files after this. Forecast is one okay. that you guys are doing forecast. Okay, it's the first worksheet. It's the first worksheet. Yep, the first worksheet. Okay, so make sure you're on four. If you look at the top, make sure you see forecast. If not, you're doing the wrong sheet. Okay. So, so everybody's getting Cassie. Thank you. What I've done for Cassie. Okay, so make sure at the top your workbook says forecast. Okay, so make sure your book, all right? Oh, so what about the platinum yeah. golf set? What'd you guys get? Yeah, changing D5. There's change, change okay, so we want to change the golf set E8 here to 9250. Oh, wait. We want to change E8 to 9250 by updating cell C8. Okay, and it came up with 40. Anybody else come up with anything different? And then golf club cleaning. We want to set E, E9 to 24.95 by changing cell. That was easy enough. Okay. Nice. Okay. Okay, you got it? Uh, sorta. Sorta? Two, three, two right here, you went to the so you want to set it to nine thousand? Oh, this one's at nine thousand. Yeah. So make sure you put the goal for that one. By this one, right? No, not that. By the okay. missing value. The missing value is always low. Why are you going to change it by? <laughs> Okay. No. All right, how's everybody doing? This is just like the simulation, right? Okay, so you're going to change to value. And then this. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. All right. 
So the, the easiest way to just click on the cell that has zero that extended by itself. So E one next one. That's right. Okay. Yep. So you want to set that value to you can set that to value seventy five hundred by changing C. Oh, All right. Where's the instructions for this? The instructions for this are in the book. Okay. Yeah. Do we have it? Do you guys have it? Okay, so you want to change that value to 9,000 by changing cell D6. So, all right, so, all right, so, so quick check. What you guys want to do is like the empty cell. So, so all right, so everybody come out of robot mode for a sec. Okay, come out of robot mode. So, we want to times the quantity times the price to get the extended price, and we want to have that equal our goal. Okay, so if you see the empty cell, that's what you're solving for. That's like x in the equation in math, right? So you're sell, solving for the empty cell. And you can do it, or Excel can do it, like, really quick. Okay? So you're solving for the empty cells. Okay? So Aaron, Diego, you have it? You got it? You guys have it? Everybody's got it? Okay, you do not have this. Cassie, you got it? Cool. All right, cool. All right, so everybody has these values in here? So um, quantity and price should be 918, that was a missing cell for C5, $36 for D6, and I think 38 for C7, 20, two, uh, 229 for D8, and 2495 for D9. All right, cool. All right, so very good. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we're going to go on to so we're not going to do um scenario manager in this chapter so that makes it really easy right so let's go into and complete a two variable table we're going to complete a two variable table all right so we're going to go to the golf pricing worksheets okay so I'm going to lock you guys up here. So this one, you have to be super duper careful because if you, if you goon this one up, in fact, everybody do remind me to have you guys make a backup of the sheet. So if we look at the sheet here, what we want to do is we want to fill out the golf fee for the golfers and have this come out to calculate our prices and our profit here. So based on golfers and golf fee, it's going to run through this formula and it's going to give us those values over there. So the way we do this is we have to say what our net income is going to be. Okay, so what cell is our net income over here on the left-hand side? D19. So D19. So what we want to do is you want to set a 3D reference to that. That is as hard as saying equals clicking the cell. So this whole cell is now going to be driven based on the net income. So whatever the formula is for net income here, it's going to do all that, putting the variables of golf fee and total golfers in. So you can do that if you wanted to, um, you know, 20 times, 10 times, you can do it 200 times, or you can let Excel do it that quick. Okay? So the way to do this then, is we're going to go in and um, we want to do a two variable table, two or two di two variable data table. So to do that, we're going to grab from this top left corner. So it's going to be G five down into R twenty one. Okay, so everybody see where I grabbed right there? Okay. And now, where are we going to do a two-variable data table at? Anybody know? Okay, so in data, what if analysis, and then we're going to do a data tables here. Okay, we're going to do a data table. So looking at this table, 
our rows, what does that row from H5 to R5 represent? So what are these numbers up here? 50, 60, 70, what is that? What does it say right here? Golf fee. So if we look over here, do we see the golf fee? Yes. Okay, what cell is that? D5. D5, so we're gonna click D5 right there, okay? And then the column input, this column represents what? Golfers. Total golfers, do we see total golfers over here? D4, okay, and watch this, blammo, that quick, it calculated all those. So that was the same thing as us doing 50 golfers, $50 golf fee, 50 golfers, $60 golf fee. It just did it that fast, all those computations for us. Pretty cool, right? So what we wanna do though, is these don't look like very good numbers, so what can we do here? Currency. Maybe do currency or accounting, either one, I don't care. So currency, so accounting's here. That puts the, the dollar sign all the way to the left. We can do currency, and that puts it in there, okay? So this is good, but um, let's say that if something is less than zero, we make it red. So we wanna make this very visually easy for us to figure out. So how can we do that? Conditional. conditional formatting, right? So we go into conditional formatting, and we can say, with all those cells highlighted, we can say highlight cells that are what? Less. Less than zero, with light red fill and dark red text. Okay, pretty cool, all right? And then what about if we said that um, if anything is, we want to have something that's more than 3,500, we want to make, um, let's see, can I clear that? Okay, so if it's greater or equal to 3,500, we want to put that green, okay? So how can we do that? So conditional formatting, and we say, uh, greater than 3,500, and we're gonna make this green fill with green text. Okay, so now we can simply see right here what our bad is, what our medium is, and what our really high grossing margins are. Okay, so to get to the green, you just simply say what? You need 125 golfers at $80. And then in red right here, if you have 50 golfers at $50, you're gonna be in the red, $3,000. Okay, does that kind of make sense? And then instead of having to sell at 934.30 up here, that might confuse people. What can we do to blank that out? Does anybody know? How do we hide it? Okay, so if we go into custom formatting, so we click on this arrow and we go to more number formats, and if we go into custom formatting, we can just change this type to semi three semicolons and click OK, and that hides it. Okay? So, kind of cool stuff, right? All right. All right, so let's have you guys do that now. Oh, you guys were unlocked. <laughs> Okay. All right, so is anybody not done with that? Is everybody done? All right, so how's everybody doing? Anybody not have that? Probably got it. Okay, looks good. Um, just set up the highlight cell rules. Um, anything less than zero. I'll go to what if analysis. So highlights, uh, and less than zero. Data table. And then we have the last one. Call three. Right. That's good. That's good. Three semicolons for custom format. Yeah. Uh, not there, not there. No, no, no. Wait. Cancel. Why is it so insane? Then sell. 
You did wrong, and unfortunately, on two variable data tables, there's no way to control Z back on this one. <laughs> so, if you got all zeros, then that's why I said make a backup. Oh, hey, remember I said make a backup? It's like when I said, what, well, I said make sure you make a backup once I unfreeze you guys, make a backup. All right, so if you grabbed all this over here, including like the total golfers in a golf fee, if you did that, then you, you'll have all zeros there. And there's no way to control Z it back. Yeah, if I just really the whole page. I'm sorry? If I just like start from fresh. You have to start from fresh, yeah. But don't worry about it, just so you guys know. Just now you know, but but that's why I said make a backup. Yeah. Okay, make a backup. That's all right. So did you get all zeros? Yeah, so don't you have to redo it all over again. Yeah. That's why I said make anytime you're doing two variable data tables. Always make a backup. That way, you can, that way you can go back. So if you didn't do it, then you just have to, to restart all over from fresh. But that's okay. I'm going to give you guys another chance. We're going to have another chance here. All right? All right, so let's go through, let's go through the um, simulation because the simulation was much better than practice. So um, take this one, save this one, and then open up the golf what if. So now you're going to get to the golf what if if you had it open before. Yeah, so this is a good one right here. All right, let's roll through the let's roll to the simulation as if we're doing it manually. So open up the golf what if sheets. Because this will give you good practice for the homework that what we just did actually wasn't very good. <laughs> it was way too easy compared to the greater assignment. Like I said, the greater assignment's a thinker. All right, you got it, Joe? Are you there? Close? But, but if you didn't, don't worry about it, Joe. We're going to come right here, so don't, don't you worry about it. So let's go into the golf, go into the what if analysis and go to the break even analysis worksheet. So the golf what if workbook and the break even analysis worksheet. Um, you might be able to try to log in again. It might, the timeout might be good, Abdul. All right, so everybody make sure you can enable editing. So let's think about this for a little bit. Let's think about this for a little bit. We want to have golf gross revenue. So what do you think the formula is going to be to do gross revenue based on your given clients, golf fee and lesson, and gross revenue? How do you think we could find a revenue? So you do what? We could say equals what? D4 times. D4 or clients times D5. There's no clients. So we can sit here all day and figure this out, but let's go further deeper and then let's and I'll show you the magic here. All right. So we have these expenses. 
and we have fixed costs and variable costs. Where's my economics and accounting majors? Okay, so what's the difference there? Fixed versus variable. Fixed don't change. change by fixed, fixed is overhead. It's like always the same. Like variable change is the same. Okay, so, so let's put an example. Let's say you're going to fly your Delta and you're going to fly a 757 from here to Washington, D.C. What's your fixed cost? You have to have gas, you have to have gas, or just the plane, you have a pilot, a co-pilot, and some flight attendants. Their salaries. Their salaries and everything else. Okay, and then what happens if you have more or less pass, so that's a fixed cost. It's gonna take that much to fly that plane there no matter what. Whether you have any passengers or no passengers, full flight, no, not full flight. Assuming that people don't weigh that much and that's gonna affect gas. We'll do it very simple, okay? But the more people we put on there, now what do we have to start accounting for? Okay, food and other things like that. So that's going to be a variable cost depending on the number of passengers we have. Fixed cost, just getting it there, and then the variable cost is gonna be the amount of people you have on board. Does that make sense? Okay, so based on that, what do you think our fixed costs are going to be for this for Manager salaries, utilities, equipment, depreciation, and insurance. How are we going to get our total fixed costs, do you think? Um, so Just add them together. They're not going to change, right? So how can we do that? Auto sum. Auto sum. Lamo. Bang. Okay, easy enough. On this one, on these variable costs, is going to vary based on the um, commissions. So where are we going to find that at? So instructor commission is going to be 10% of the gross revenue. Okay, 10% of gross revenue. Okay, so it's going to be equal to, how do we do that? D6. Equals D6, D6 times, times, times C7, C15 here. Does everybody see that? The instructor commission is going to be based on the gross revenue. So gross revenue times 10% gives us that value. Now grant there's nothing in there because, because we have gross revenue as zero. Okay, how's everybody doing? Anybody feeling lost, stuck, behind? Uh, I'm a little bit of math. Right? How's everybody doing? I can't tell. It's pretty easy to so, Jim, up. All right, so how are we going to do the variable cost for supplies per client? What do you guys think? D4. So that's going to equal D4 because that's our number of clients times the supplies per clients. Okay, C16. And then our total variable costs are going to equal what? The sum. The sum of? Our variable costs, all right? So we're gonna auto sum, okay? And then what's our total expenses going to equal? Fixed plus variable. Our fixed cost plus our variable cost. So what's that going to equal? Equals D13. D13 plus D17, okay? What do you think our net income's gonna be now? Okay, revenue minus our expenses. Revenue minus expenses. So revenue, so this is going to equal D6. our revenue, D6, minus, D8. minus our total expenses, D18. Okay, now the real magic is going to happen. Okay? What about if I told you guys do a break-even analysis on this? What does that mean? A break-even analysis. We would want our income to be zero. We want to make our, our income equal to zero. What's going to adjust that income? The number of clients we have. Man, if only there was a way to set a value to zero and, I don't know, go seek this goal and then figure out our number of clients. Wouldn't that be cool? So what do you think we'll do here? 
Yeah. Goal, seek. Goal seek. So what do we want to do? Yeah. We want to set our net income, D19. So we're going to go data. What if analysis goal seek? So we want to set D19 to what value? Zero. Zero by up by changing what? D4, our number of clients. And if we do that, look at that. So if we have 63.8 persons, we'll call it 64 maybe, just because we don't want to solve people in ACE, <laughs> okay? So let's say we do okay. So do you know how long that would have taken you guys to plug those numbers in and do higher and lower and everything else? I mean, if we wanted to, we could have did what? We could have said, I don't know, put 50 in there. Then what? I don't know, put 70 in there. Um, now we're above. Damn now split the difference, put 60 in there. And we could have did that all day long to hide the warm cold game, yeah. or just let Excel do the hard work for us. All right, so how many people are lost? How many people don't have this? All right. All right, so let's go back through and validate all of your all your values. It probably came up to you. look at these, look at the cell. So everybody, if you didn't get this, everybody listen up. Everybody listen up if you didn't get this. Make sure that D6 is equal to D4 times D5. Okay, everybody has that that doesn't have this. Okay. D12 or D13 should have been the sum of D9 through D12. Okay, so D15 should have been equal to D6 times C15. Okay, so D16 should have been equal to D4 times C16. Okay. D17 should have been the sum of D15 and D16. Okay? Total expenses is equal to D13 plus D17. Okay? And then your net income is equal to D6 minus D18. I have all those in my value for some different Okay, so if your values are different than that, go into goal seek. So go into goal seek and make sure you're selecting D19. You're selecting D19 and you're doing what if analysis, goal seek, and you're setting D19 to the value of zero by changing cell D4. And you should get 63.83 for D4. Oh, I got that. <laughs> okay, now we're all good. Okay, now we're all good. Wait, Is anybody still on? Yeah, <laughs> So this is equal to the instructor commission is going to be equal to these you know, the six to the whole. It's going to be equal to right, uh, clients I think about it. times B sixteen. So and this is going to be equal to D four. I would have gone to that. I told my friend, oh, I told him, I don't know. Anyway. I told him, I was like, if we're mad moving in the third quarter, we're leaving. This one could be traffic. <laughs> yeah.
Like, how did we, like, two people could have been all two, two people, and I get one, like, you better figure it out. The next person pick it up. Two people not picking it up? Like, I do you you're stupid. Like, we have literally lost games every which way now. <laughs> Overton. Jess, I can play. What's going on? Interception. <laughs> and that was in the last two minutes. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Yeah. I got good seats. I, mean, I wish I wish Manny was still on the team. I'd be like, we're trying to do a big game. Any soccer games going up to talk about any time soon? Oh no. That's a good question to ask. They're always friendly though. So your variable cost is going to be that sum. Yep. Okay. And then your total no. sense of the way they look at it. Yeah, I don't think he's going to give us any more extensions. He's like, they're too expensive. The only reason he gave us such a lot of extensions. He doesn't teach anything. Okay, so that's it sounds that. like I'm still lost in chapter five. And when you chapter five, six and seven, but I figured out how to do probability the um, the binomial and the poisson on my on my on my graphing numbers. So I know the formula, but if I could, you have a graphing calculator? I know. Yeah, but all right, other way, John. We do not have this. Everybody's good. All right, cool. All right, mush. Let's move forward. So on this one, what we want to do is we want to do a one variable table. One variable table. So we're going to use a client demand as our one variable. What cell represents the expenses over there on the left? What's our expenses? Equals what? D18. D18. So we're going to click here, D18. Okay, what about our revenue? What cell is that 3D reference? D6. Okay, D6. And what about our net income? D19. D19. Okay, so everybody have that? So you have D18 and H4, D6 and I, I4, and D19 and J4. Okay, so now we're going to do what? We're going to grab this corner. Don't grab the client demand or the expenses. So grab the range from G4 down to J14. And this time we're going to do one if analysis. And this time, do we have a one variable data table or a two variable data table? Not two. We only have one. We just have the clients. Okay, everything else is, is the references. So this is gonna be a data table, and it's gonna be a one variable data table. So do we have any input across our across the row? No. Do we have anything changing? No. No, what about client demand? Is that a column or a row? Column. Column, and then what cell is that over here? Where's clients at? D4, right? So we're just going to put D4 for column. We're going to say that's D4, and we're going to click on OK, and it's going to calculate all of our numbers for us. So based on the client and out, based on the client demand, if you have 10 clients, here's your expenses, here's your revenue, here's your net income. So based on this, you'd have to have what? I mean, this is kind of shows you what you have over here. Where you have like your different um, like number of clients, and here's where you start making a profit between 60 and 70. Okay. 
well, 64 to be exact, right? 63.83, right there, right? Right, so this type of work is what your employees are gonna expect, expect of you, not do the simulation, click the cell, do that to sell, rub your head, pat your tummy. They don't care about that. <laughs> they can automate that. This type of work is what they want you guys to be doing. Okay, this is hardcore, real work here. Okay, this can't be automated. This requires people. All right, so we go on to loan conditions. Uh, you guys know how to do that. Let's do another table over here for um, a two variable table. Let's practice this again. So right now, everybody go make a backup of fees and demand. <laughs> so right click, move or copy, create a copy and move it to the end. And then go back to fees and demand. All right, so we want to do a two variable data table based on income, and that's gonna be based on client demand and lesson prices. So how can we set that up? What goes where? Net what do you guys net, think? Net income goes in E3. Net income goes where? E3. Okay, is everybody agree for Nice? Net income E3? Anybody not see that? Okay, see right here, we're putting it up in the corner. So that's gonna be our variable where things cross. So we're saying that's gonna be equal to net income, and that's gonna be a 3D reference to B7, okay? Now we do what? what? Now we grab from E3, don't grab D, don't grab um, row two, so starting at E3, Go down to L16. Okay. Is this a one variable data table or a two variable data table? Two, right? Because we're varying lesson prices across the top and clients on the column. Okay. So, how do we do that? Data, what if analysis, data table. And then what's going to be our row input? Lesson, lesson prices. And where is lesson prices over here? Hey, B3. So we're going to click B3. And then we have our column input. That's going to be what? Clients. clients. And where's our clients? B2. B2. Okay, we click on OK and blammo. There you go again. Okay, so we can grab from F, F4 down to L16, and we could do some auto or accounting or currency formatting. Okay, and do the same thing here. Have it less than, if it's less than zero, make it um, conditionally formats red. So it's less than zero, make it light red with, with uh, red dark text. And then over here, if it's um, greater than, let's say if it's greater than 3,000. Make it green with green fill. Okay, kind of cool, right? Nito Coolio, All right? Sales forecast, all right, let's do this one too. So let's practice on some goal seeks right here. Okay, this is gonna be kind of similar before. So how do we do this one? We wanna find, so in row number five, what do we wanna find here? We wanna find quantity, price, extended price, or goal. We wanna set extended price to the goal by calculating what? Quantity. So an extended price, E5, we're gonna to go to data, what if analysis goal seek, and we wanna set E5 to the value 25,000 by changing what? C5, there we go. Okay, what about 
on E6. What do we want to do here? Set it to 12. We want to set it to 12,500 by changing what? D6. Okay, there we go. Okay, what about E7? We want to do what? 18, we want to set it to 4250 by changing cell D7. Okay. And then for E8, we want to do what? We want to set that to 18675. Oh, I screwed up. We want to set E8 to 18675 by changing cell C8. There you go. All right. Questions, thoughts? All seems doable. So you guys have the video and you also have the helper tips to do this. So this is going to be due on Monday. Okay, this is due on Monday. If you guys got what we did in class today and think about the hints, this is probably about a half hour assignment. If a person was kind of lost and still lost now and then didn't ask for help or whatever, it could be an hour plus. Okay. But the good news is you have the video, right? And the tutoring center. All right. So let's talk about the um, study guide. Really, let's rip through the exam. Yeah, turn this one in. Yeah, turn this one in. Um. Yeah, turn in. Turn in the second one. That's fine. So let's quickly look through the study guide. How many people have not looked at the study guide yet? Where do I find the study guide? That's a better question. Where does one find the study guide? Online, we're at online. A lot, a lot of things online. Okay, learning modules, module two. I made it hard, it's, it's right at the top. Okay, it's right at the top. So if we click on this, on this exam two guide, All right, so we're going to enable editing. We're going to make this view page width. All right, so what are typical units that's, that storage is measured in? What is the relationship between the units? Which is smaller or larger? What do you guys think? What do you think that question is going to be like, possibly? But it's like maybe like an ordering question. Okay. Okay, so no, but not even. Yeah, don't worry about 1024. Just know that's the real value, but just do it by the thousands. That's easiest. Okay, know the difference between what computer, um, know the different computer components and how they interact during booting up. The picture with all the blocks, that was that three star one. So know that one. So we hit a machine, what happens? We turn our machine. Okay, we have to boot up from something non-volatile because we don't have power, right? And what do we hit first? We hit the power, then that goes to what? Not the RAM. Okay, we first have to do what? Conductors, we have to warm up our instruments, and who does that? CPU. That's the CPU. Starts with a B. BIOS. BIOS, right? So we have the BIOS, and that does all the checks. And then what happens? Then part of the BIOS, we have this big, huge hard drive, and it has a what? Starts with an M. Master boot record. And it says, hey, on this whole big terabyte drive, go look there, and what are you gonna, what's it going to point to? What's the, yeah, there you go, the operating system. The first thing you want to load up is what? The operating system. Once you do that, now you can start clicking on things. So the operating system is going to be on the hard drive, but that's useless to you because you have to get it where? RAM. Into RAM, right? Once it's into RAM, you can do what now? Now you can run your applications because you start clicking on things with your input output devices that talk to the operating system through what? The driver, right? To the drivers, okay? And then once it's in there and you load up your applications, now what happens? Now you can start crunching numbers with the what? 
What's the brain? The processor, the CPU, and the CPU is connected to the RAM via the data bus. Okay, we have two flavors of data buses. We have what? 32 bit. Any issues with that? Is it limited? Is it limiting? Okay, what's its limit? Four gigabytes. four gigabytes of RAM. So if you want to do anything more than four gigabytes of RAM, you would need 33 bits. But darn it, we could only double things in computer land. So 32 bits becomes what? 64 bits. So instead of two to the 32 RAM, we now have two to the 64. That's a ginormous number. Okay, so you have ginormous amounts of RAM. Okay, we talked about virtualization. That's just going to be like sharing all the computer resources, hard drive, networking. Um, we had the two different operating systems. You have the host operating system, and then the guest operating systems. Know that. I'm sorry? Um, yeah, so don't, yeah, so I kind of dumbed that down. So just worry about the host operating system, the guest operating system. Yeah. So thanks, I'll make that update. Um, what are the differences between thick clients and thin clients? What's a thin client? Something you don't have to install. Okay. Like what? Gmail like Gmail. So anything you typically get to through the internet, those are all web applications. And as Aaron said, we don't have to install anything. The only problem is what? If you look at if you look at something like Google Docs versus Microsoft Office. Feature not not as feature rich, right? But it comes at the cost, so you'll see that whole thing in IT, it's usually this cost-benefit ratio. So you have to install you know, Office everywhere, but it's the juice is worth the squeeze there. Okay, know the different operating systems for desktop, mobile, and servers, things like Linux and Unix and Windows Server, and Windows 7, Mac OS. Okay, um, we talked about the different categories and applications of programs. We said we had the horizontal. Okay, what's horizontal? What's an example of that? Somebody goes across all industries, it doesn't change. Microsoft Office. Okay, we said we had vertical. That'd be things like maybe like micros or POS in the restaurant industry. Okay. Um, and then we had one of a kind. That would be like the IRS. Okay. Firmware, we said that's kind of what we do in embedded operating systems, what we load up in our phones. Um, so that's going to be, um, you can take power away from it and it still works. We talked about open source software. Can you read, true or false, can you read source code? No. You can read source code, right? That's what you actually program and look at. Can you read compiled code? No. That's what you can't read. Source code, humans can read. Machine code, machines can read. So that's the two things. To get from source code to machine code, we compile, and that's what takes the human readable into the machine readable. So that's a compiler. Okay? And we already talked about why one would use a database over a simple spreadsheet. We talked about primary and foreign keys today. Know the difference between a field, a record, and a table. Fields are columns, records are rows, and then tables are a collection of rows. Major components of a database is what? Tables one. Then yeah. no, 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 table. No, no. So there's the three parts. We had data about data, and that is metadata. Metadata, and then we had the the primary and foreign keys. Those things form the relationships. Okay. So the major components of a database: tables, metadata, and relationships. All right. Uh, what are some of the most uh, popular database management systems? Which ones are enterprise, personal, and open source? What's the purpose of a database management system? Okay, we talked about RIMs. You can create, modify, delete. We had all those functions in there. Okay, read, insert, modify. We also had security with views and roles. Okay. Some of the different data applications, queries, um, reports, uh, queries, reports, and um, 
tables, reports, or forms and reports, so know all those. Advantages and disadvantages of using NoSQL versus relational databases. So we said NoSQL is good for what? So what's unstructured data versus structured data? You may remember unstructured data? So that's things like video, uh, music, things like that. We said relational databases aren't very good at that. We're not very good at doing replication. So that's why we have NoSQL. Sounds great, but super duper hard to implement. Few people can do it. Um, so that's databases. We talked about cloud as far as elasticity and pooled on demand. What's multi-tenancy? You remember multi-tenancy? Yeah, okay, so you can have a public cloud. You can share the resources, but nobody can see the data. Even if you're on the same CPU and the same uh, hard drive, okay. What role does virtualization play here? Basically, all the clouds based on virtualization. Okay, so how can a company use the cloud to control the response time for its website? What can it do? You can just start going to like Amazon Web Services or SoftLayer if you're using that, and just say, "I need a hundred extra servers today. It's Christmas time. I'm Nordstrom." I'm Best Buy and Walmart. I need to add 500 extra servers on here for the month of November and December. I'll turn them off in January. Okay. Um, we talked about public cloud and private cloud. So a private cloud would be something like Walmart and all of its registers. It can open them up on demand or close them down. Can it give it to Kmart next door? No. So that's a private cloud. Okay. When might a public cloud not be desirable? When might a public cloud not, might not be? We talked about some industries. Okay, military, financial, healthcare. Okay. We talked about the three as a service layers. What are they? Software, platform, software, platform, and infrastructure as a service. What's the most basic one? Infrastructure. What's that infrastructure? CPU. Things like our hardware, so it's going to be CPU, RAM, storage, operating systems. Okay, what's the next layer up? Platform. Platform as a service. Okay, that's in the middle, so we call that middleware. Things like our app servers, our web servers, and our database management systems. Okay, and then above that we have software as a service. That's like the end user products we get to. It's also where the replication happens in our cloud layers as we go to Dropbox and sync up our music. It's all happening at that software as a service layer. What's a VPN? Virtual private network. What's a big aha so what of a virtual private network? Sends encrypted messages. So we can use basically the public internet to send data to our companies and they can't see it. So it's much cost. It's very cost effective for us to use the public internet to send out our encrypted data, okay? So nobody can see it. All right, so that's a, that's the test in a nutshell. So I think some, so maybe it's been a couple weeks since you guys looked at this, so two days, study up. Go forth, conquer, Josh. All right.